good morning people welcome back again day seven blockchain challenge um, a 21 days challenge of blockchain fundamentals uh, we have four sections today um, so I'll try to keep it short uh, section number one homework on blockchain and mining visually so here we have two questions the first question goes excuse me why is it important that the blocks are crypto cryptographically linked together um, this is more for more of a security reason because if the blocks are cryptographically uh, cryptographically linked uh, this way it's very very difficult or next to impossible for one to go back and change history so this way uh, this is where the immutability in the blockchain uh, comes from so the blocks being uh, cryptographically linked it basically almost means that uh, the it almost means that everything is one so because of the link there is no separation there is no point it's very difficult for you to go back uh, in between blocks and change uh, and change uh, the previous uh, information so that's the reason um, and that's the reason why it's important question number two what does the block structure looks like in Bitcoin um, for this question I will uh, refer you to the link um, just check the link up here or is it up here I don't know <laughs> it's my first time I'm gonna do this so check the link here or here and um, you will see but just to give you already, already a, a, a brief answer so uh, uh, the structure you have uh, five fields uh, in each uh, Bitcoin block so you have uh, magic uh, the, uh, you have this in these fields you have uh, the magic number you have the block size the block header uh, transaction counter and the transaction so these are the five fields I'm not gonna waste your time to explain all this if you just click in the link you're gonna see a much better explanation uh, of this uh, different uh, uh, fields so there are just two questions on this uh, section so moving forward moving forward um, homework on block interval block reward and transaction fees uh, so for this we have also two questions Question number one, uh, what are the pros and cons of having bigger block size? So the pros here is just uh, if you have a bigger block size, uh, you'll be able to fit more transactions inside the block. So uh, this will also give you uh, um, the advantages of uh, uh, of uh, speed processing so you'll be able to uh, to process the transaction faster so the transaction uh, per second uh, the transaction speed per second is going to increase um, the cons uh, here uh, is just it will make it it will make it more expensive to run a node uh, not only that it also means that the bigger uh, the block size the more space uh, the more space your computer is going to need and uh, the more processing power your computer is going to need and uh, this is also um, is also going to uh, limit uh, the amount of people running a full node so it will be less decentralized and um, why is this is because yeah um you will need more resources and only the bigger players all the people with more cheng cheng or more uh, resources uh are going to run uh the nodes so this is uh this is a little bit against the original idea of a decentralized network so decentralized means that uh, uh anyway uh, according to uh what uh, Satoshi Nakamoto intended was that um, a normal person like you and me should also be able to run um, to run a node uh, on the blockchain uh, and if um, if the blocks are made bigger this is going to uh, make sure that 
some people who don't have the resources won't uh, will be excluded from the network so those are the cons um, how does uh, question number two how does the Bitcoin network make sure that the block time remains at 10 minutes well um, they have this um, power puzzle uh, that they that they're handling so by um, increasing or decreasing uh, the power puzzle difficulty this is how they can regulate the time so an increase of the difficulty would means that you need more time to uh, solve the puzzle so the, the more difficult the puzzle the more time you take the less difficult the puzzle the less times it takes so by playing with this difficulty um, this is how they can try to fit uh, to fit uh, the the, the 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 block time to 10 minutes so those were the questions on um blockchain uh, on the block interval uh, block reward transaction fees uh the third section um we have four questions here and uh, this is homework on steel blocks actually these questions are a little bit funny for me because um if you read all the questions actually the question uh, some the next question or some questions are answers to the previous uh, question so let's just dive into it question number one what happens in the bitcoin network when two miners solve a block at the same time well actually um when two miners solve a block at the same time the obvious thing they're gonna do is they're gonna uh, propagate uh, this to the closest node uh, next to them and this this node is also going to propagate to the other nodes so actually two chains are being created at the at that moment and uh, eventually the longest chain is going to win and in order for me to explain you that i have to get into question number two and the question is what is a steel block well if you understand what i just said you should already have an idea of what a steel block is so a steel block is basically a, a block that was once uh, viewed as a, as a valid block within the blockchain but because another chain was longer uh, uh, this uh, block that was once viewed as a, as a valid block becomes invalid so that's what uh, that's what a steel block is so it's a block that was that used to be part of the current blockchain but not is is not more is no more part of the blockchain because the other chain uh, that was longer uh, won um and then the third question how does steel block occur so if you remember question number one uh question number one was what happens in the bitcoin network when two miners solve a block at the same time and now question number three is how does the steel block occur so actually um, question number one is is the correct answer but if I have to go into more um, into more uh, uh, details I'll just say like okay you have the two the two different miners that produce two different blocks at the same time and just as I explained uh, in the first in the first uh, question um, the longer chain is always going to win so uh, the steel block occurs just because just by uh, one chain um, okay you have two you have two blocks that has two different versions of truth but because they are being that geographically uh, being um, spread within uh, their community by the time the, the start uh, uh, reaching uh, uh, reaching the same nodes the the nodes that has to decide which fit uh, to, to follow which paths to follow is always going to look at what is what is the longest block and that is how um, by decide by that node deciding that that is how this other block now becomes a steel block uh, question number three uh, number four why is it important to wait for more than uh, one block to be confirmed when sending or receiving a transaction well we've been talking about steel block and now the last question is why is it important to wait well if you if you understand if you understand that um 
if you understand that steel block is uh, steel blocks are, uh, are occurred because uh, you have another chain that is going to uh, that is longer and that wins so it is that is, is for that's why it's for, it's very important to wait to have as much as possible confirmations um, uh, before sending or receiving uh, transaction because if you send uh, or receive a transaction with just a few um, uh, confirmation then it means that you you are risking you are risking to be in to be in a steel block position because um, all these confirmations that needs to come maybe there is some there is another there is another miner at the other at the other end who must mine the same block but maybe that chain is longer that's why you always have to wait and uh, have some more confirmation i hope that makes sense okay now for the last section homework on soft and hard forks we have three questions so question number one what is the difference between a soft and a hard fork well um just look at it this way a soft fork um if you if you um, if you if you do a soft fork on a network this uh, uh this uh, upgrade or this change is uh, compatible with the old version so it means that the old version can also run uh with this uh, upgrade you don't need to change everything so it's backwards compatible um and it also doesn't uh, a soft fork doesn't also require a network to split or something well on the other hand a hard fork um this causes uh, this causes this change uh, in the protocol uh, is not backwards compatible so it means the older version cannot use uh cannot participate in the in, in the fork in in a, in, a, in, a, in a hard fork so this also means that you will require all your nodes to to upgrade and this can also um cause a network to split so yeah the network that is following the old fork would remain at the old fork and the network that upgrades to the new to the new hard fork is going to follow uh, uh follow the this this path and this is how networks do split so question number two what are some of the reasons why you will do a hard fork well um, if you want to change something uh, like in the block structure or the difficulty uh like the difficulty rules uh, or the block hash all this all these things require you to perform a hard fork so those those are some reasons why you would perform a hard fork and uh, to get more into details i should just jump into question number three what are some of the risk uh, uh with performing with performing a hard fork so the risk here as we just said in the the um in question number one not only do you risk splitting uh, the network, but you also uh, risk splitting the community, and you also um, you are also going to create two coins when performing a hard fork. So you also have to you also have to take into consideration that there is a risk of a replay attack. Uh, a replay attack in the in the upcoming uh, in the upcoming. Uh, section we're going to talk, talk more about a replay attack but for now just know like okay you have you have your 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 um, your private your private and your public keys uh, on this network right but now a hard a hard fork is done and you have uh, two uh, two separate uh, separate networks but your private keys and the public keys here are the same that are being used here so if you if you uh, do something on this network using your private and your public keys uh, this information can now be used and be replayed on the other uh, network like on the previous network or vice versa so that those are like those are like um, the the risk uh, of uh, of a, uh, of a hard fork so those were my questions and answers 
on the D7 on the D7 uh, challenge. So we covered we covered quite a lot uh, blockchain and mining visually, uh, blockchain reward, uh, transaction fees, block interval, steel blocks. We talked about steel block. We talked about soft and hard forks. Well, if you have any questions, kindly uh, leave down below some comments. Uh, tell me what you think. Um, if there is something that I said wrong, uh, kindly um, correct me in the in the in the in the comments. We are all here to learn. I'm just uh, diving deep into uh, my homework um, and uh, I'm knowing more in-depth knowledge on on the blockchain. Um, I hope you also learn something for this from this. If you are interested, I really really. Um, recommend you taking the courses of Ivan he does a very great job in explaining all this uh, if I know uh, some of these uh, things is due to the due to the, the the very very good explanation Ivan does in his courses so this is it's a must it's a must for people who like really know nothing from blockchain and would like really like to learn uh, the basics for me this is the best place to be this is the best place to be so uh, that was it for day seven. I hope uh, to see you very soon at day eight of uh, my blockchain challenge, uh, blockchain fundamentals, 21 days. Um, that was it. Victor Vitorios, I'm checking out Crypto Sniper. Yo.